At this time, you might be under the impression that meter in and meter out are equally applicable for all scenarios. This is not true. You'll note in the previous examples, we were moving a supported object laterally. There exist tipping, tilting, negative, or overrunning loads that preclude certain configurations, the classic example being a vertically lifted object. Consider a vertically mounted pneumatic cylinder that lifts on extension and lowers on retraction. Extension is not an issue. Either a meter in or meter out extension method will work equally well. Retraction, however, that's the issue. You don't want the load to crash to the earth. You've got two choices, meter in retraction or meter out. Meter in won't work, meter out will. Allow me to demonstrate. A meter in retraction does control flow entering the rod end. However, with no restriction on the cap end, as soon as the cap end is exhausted to atmosphere, the load slams to the ground. Not exactly the best load handling system if you wanted to keep the load in any usable state. In contrast, a meter out retraction configuration keeps a cushion of air trapped in the cylinder cap end supporting the lifted load during descent. The tighter the restriction, the slower the cap end drains and the slower the descent. When in doubt, meter out. Let's try this with a different mounting configuration. Consider a vertically mounted pneumatic cylinder that lifts on retraction and lowers on extension. In this scenario, retraction is not a problem. Either meter in or meter out retraction methods will work equally well. Extension, however, is the issue. As previously, we've got two choices, meter in extension or meter out. Meter in won't work, meter out will. Allow me to demonstrate. A meter in extension does control flow entering the cap end, however, with no restriction on the rod end, as soon as the rod end is exhausted to atmosphere, the load slams to the ground and breaks into a thousand tiny pieces. Let's try meter out. In contrast, a meter out extension configuration keeps a cushion of air trapped in the rod end supporting the lifted load. The tighter the restriction, the slower the rod end drains and the slower the descent. Again, when in doubt, meter out. Now that we've got a good appreciation for meter out flow control methods, I should mention cylinders with adjustable cushions on extension and retraction make use of this method at the very end of the cylinder stroke. Cushions allow a cylinder to move quickly through a majority of its stroke, however, ease it to a nice gentle stop at the limits of extension or retraction instead of just slam into a halt. Cylinders with cushions have a special shaped piston with a plug that fits into a circular depression. Here, I'm illustrating a cushion on retraction in the cap end with the rod emitted for clarity. As the piston retracts mid-stroke, the plug and hole don't come into play and exhausted air has an unobstructed path out of the barrel. However, as the piston nears the limits of retraction, the plug fits into the hole, blocking the larger port, leaving a cushion of air trapped between the piston and the ring with a narrow restriction as the only means for air to exhaust. If the cushion is adjustable, a technician can increase or decrease the size of this restriction so that the cushion of air is exhausted quickly or slowly, thus saving the piston face from repeated and forceful impacts at the limits of extension and retraction. Lastly, I should mention that one can use a combination of methods to control both extension and retraction. Consider one such possibility with two flow control valves with check valve bypasses, both installed in the cap end of a cylinder. Flow control valve one establishes a meter in extension arrangement by forcing all flow entering the cap end during extension through the narrow restriction. During extension, flow control valve two would be bypassed one would adjust flow control valve one to dial in extension speed. Flow control valve two, in contrast, establishes a meter out retraction arrangement by forcing air exhausted from the cap end during retraction through the narrow restriction. During retraction, flow control valve one would be bypassed. One would adjust flow control valve two to dial in retraction speed. Alternatively, one could put a flow control valve on either end of a double acting cylinder. In this configuration, flow control valve one on the cap end establishes a meter in extension arrangement, whereas flow control valve two on the rod end establishes a meter in retraction arrangement. If one kept the flow control valves with check valve bypasses in place, yet flip flop their orientation, you'd flip flop their function. In this implementation, flow control valve one on the cap end establishes a meter out retraction arrangement, whereas flow control valve two on the rod end establishes a meter out extension arrangement. You may wish to pause the lecture and stare at these different configurations to discern the differences if they're not immediately identifiable. Again, check valve orientation is what determines the direction of a controlled or metered flow. 
Lastly, lastly, I should mention flow control is a good and often necessary thing. However, there are applications where one action must be precise and controlled and the opposite action must occur as fast as possible. For example, consider some high-paced production process where extension must be slow and controlled. However, retraction needs to happen as fast as possible because another part's getting slammed into place. For this style of application, one might consider a meter in extension arrangement as long as we're laterally manipulating a supported load. On extension, flow entering the cap end will be forced through the flow control valve. However, during retraction, the check valve bypass would open and allow unrestricted reverse flow. You'd think the term unrestricted reverse flow would allow the most rapid retraction possible, but it doesn't. Principally because air exhausted from the cap end during retraction still has to travel through all the tubing to the exhaust on the directional control valve. Which begs the question, why are we worried about porting exhaust air back to a direction control valve if we're just going to dump it into space anyways? Why can't we just dump it into the atmosphere at the point of use? Wouldn't that accelerate retraction? Indeed it does. We'll examine a component called a quick exhaust valve in an upcoming lecture that allows this ability to selectively dump exhaust air directly into the environment at the point of use, thus rapidly accelerating one action of a complete reciprocation cycle. Until then, this concludes this lecture. In conclusion, this lecture took a look at pneumatic flow control methods, including meter in extension, meter out extension, meter in retraction, and meter out retraction. Additionally, we examined applications of these methods and discussed scenarios appropriate for and inappropriate for their use. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.